The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to the Lord's house this day as we come to the fourth Sunday in Advent and rejoice the Lord's coming soon next Sunday, as you remember with Christmas falling on Sunday. But either way, we rejoice today in that light of the gospel in the midst of this Advent season. There's two things to share with you this morning. Uh, one is uh, I wanted to mention and we'll pray for the family and friends of a pastor who I guess has served here in the past, but not during my time, um, quite a time ago, I guess, but he helped to fill pulpit supply and stuff, but his name was Kurt Gremmel, and he passed away. And so we'll keep the family and prayers, friends in our, in our prayers, but he was a pastor, ended up down in Tipton, and that's where the funeral will be and stuff. Uh, this tomorrow, actually, I believe is Monday is when the funeral will be. But we'll keep the family and friends of Kurt Gremmel in our prayers. Also, uh, as you know, we introduced the Common Cup on the first Sunday of December, and we continue with that now. And just to remind you that the order is very simple, like we always do. So the pastor comes by with the host, and the individual cup, cups come by, by by the elder. And if you would want to have the, the Common Cup, you just keep your hands open. All right? And also, I encourage you that if you'd want to, because the cup is smaller um, and harder to manage, so if you want to grab the base of the cup to help lift it and tilt it, that's quite fine. It'd be a little easier because of the cup is smaller but deeper, so it's a little bit hard to know if you've received much wine. Other than that, the Lord bless you this day as we gather before his better presence of word and sacrament that lifts up our hearts because Jesus comes. And with that in mind, we do that with our opening hymn. Let the earth now praise the Lord. 352, the Lord bless you this day.
Please rise. We continue with the order of service, Divine Service 1, on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the introit as printed in the bulletin. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. That the mountains might wait in your presence. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love. And with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. That the mountains might quake in your presence. We continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us Gracious Lord. Amen. We continue on page 156. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord. And come, and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for this fourth Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah chapter 7. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, 
Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will put, not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? And therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good land, whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We continue with the gradual... Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout to Lord, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. And the epistle is from Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets and the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Alleluia. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, he took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, you may be seated. We continue with the hymn of the day, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel 357. Please note the appointed verses.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior. Amen. Who enjoys being left out? You didn't like it when you were in school, and you still don't like it today. People are created to be involved with each other. It is why opening Christmas cards feels good at this time of the year, or better, when we exchange presents face-to-face than getting them in the mail. Wanting to be included is so powerful that, yes, even our sinful nature seeks to run after those kind of things of involvement. Not the good things, though, right? To be involved with, I don't know, the latest gossip, craving to be in the popular group, or as you know, uh, you know, longing for a certain status among people. Of course, the closeness of all these things finally comes down to, in many ways, um, marriage. We can think about this because God gave this for a man and a woman, the deepest of connections, we can say, given in life. Wedges today, though, are many. And wedges, like the practice of abortion, or on the other side, the conception methods like IVF, IVF and others have caused disconnection. Men and women are in many ways at a loss that questions the value of marriage and purpose of the one flesh union God gave. If this separation is a real thing in marriage, then no wonder it's affected everything else, causing many, as you know, to be alone with themselves. I'm not saying it's a, not a bad thing to be a single person. There's some who can sail through life with that gift, and that's a special blessing. This is a loneliness tied because we don't know how to relate anymore when we come together especially as husband and wife. Joseph understood a thing or two about separation. His wife, Mary, was involved, as you know, in the conception of Jesus. She's the virgin mother. She would go, as our front of the bulletin shows you, she would go and visit Elizabeth, her cousin, for a, few, for a good visit to celebrate God's promised good news. And the John the Baptist in the womb of Elizabeth would rejoice at the presence of Jesus, Right? On the other hand, I couldn't find a cover for today's text for the bulletin because on the other hand, you've got her engaged husband, Joseph. And he sat in the sidelines. He had nothing to do with it. Unlike women who can carry a child, men are to appreciate today the internal struggle felt by Joseph. Joseph. The worst experience for any man is not to be able to fix something, solve the problem, save the day, as my dad would, would think about it, or have anything, everything taken out of his hands. And in the case of Joseph, it particularly meant the privilege of being a biological father. This was not his son. We can get into debates about him having other children and stuff like that, but the fact of the matter is, is this was not his son. Only the Word could remove the fears, depression, and all that comes with that that fell on Joseph. And likewise, without the gospel to give us hope to call Jesus our Savior, we will remain separated, disconnected from God and each other. And so Joseph was a guy who wanted to do the right thing, right? Even when facing what appeared to be a sinful situation, yeah, he was left in the dark about how Mary got pregnant, but people make mistakes, and she was young. He could have made her life more than hard by divorce. The law was clear. Adult adulterers would be shunned or worse, you want to take him to real task? You could stone him, especially women. How, of course, would that make anything better for anybody except for Joseph? Evil for evil, tit for tat. He was a child of the true God of Israel. He took Scripture seriously, and this was also no kid's game. 
people's lives were at stake. Two, to be exact. I suppose Mary's experience with the angel, you can envision it, maybe she had given voice to that fact. Little good that would do, though, considering the physical evidence spoke volumes more than whatever she had thought about or had come to from the angel Gabriel. Where was God in such a distressing picture like Joseph? How could Mary be trusted as a faithful wife? Joseph was alone and without the gospel. He was left to his own thoughts to solve this puzzle, but this was no promising comfort as thoughts can go. Only God's Word would draw together a peace that the world could not give. Now, we know most people consider themselves to be that pretty good person in life. At least that's hopefully what, you know, that humanitarian mentality of we strive for the good for some reason. They try to take care of their family, right? They treat people nice, um, and you want to do the right thing. Having morals are important, and being spiritual or a religious person, maybe being even Christian, helps keep things together for life. It's a surprise then, the big surprise, how the true church that carries Christ by the preached word and sacraments comes as a shock, just as Mary did to Joseph. Everyone naturally has a connection, you see, with the law, with works, with doing kind of a right thing. But the gospel is different. People are to receive their salvation given in Jesus, a gift that literally comes out of nowhere before a person's life. Rather than trying to actively secure it by works. The initial reaction to the presence of the gospel in life is much like with Joseph. God seems so distant and suddenly when I cannot feel like I'm helping him with my salvation, I have my hand somewhere involved with it. It's common in the pews of congregations to have someone say over the years and when they get especially older, I just don't know why I'm here anymore. And then I get worried as a pastor because your place has always been to hear and receive from Jesus. And it's even harder on older pastors who've always been in the pulpit and given out God's gifts to his people. There is a separation felt by all, too, by all the other religions and spiritualities of the world. We got them up at this time of the year for Christmas. We got Hanukkah that just started, and we have other things that religions try to celebrate to kind of mix into the Christmas spirit, but it's not the same as God's grace. Most are left pondering what to do with the church of Christ, and the reasonable solution on man's terms that it's best to divorce her from their lives, especially as our families become more and more diverse with religious beliefs. If it were not for that angel, that preacher of the word, Joseph would have left. However, his life changed when he heard in that dream, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. As distant as Joseph might have felt or thought he was from Mary, God's news of the gospel at work removed his fears to even draw closer to her. Both their lives now were held together to believe in the promising word that became flesh. Mary literally carried the truth, and Joseph treasured him. This child was not his son, but the Savior for all. And so as a servant of the true king, this was Emmanuel, God with us. Joseph had the duty to provide and protect the gospel that was made human flesh. His wife Mary was holy, not in herself to be worshipped, but by God's Son 
who graced her with His humble presence. Joseph wholeheartedly received this good news. You know why he would receive it, because he would call his name Jesus. How much did Joseph, as a son of Adam, at first struggle over God's way of coming? And yet the virgin birth shows us how ready God was to greet humanity with his salvation. Ready or not, here I come, but it's going to mess you all up when I come. Because it's going to be in a way that you do not know. Unless the words of the gospel give us hope to call Jesus our Savior, we will remain separated from God and each other. Behold, the church had received a wonderful gift, it comes with the promise of sins forgiven, new life born out of Christ. Mary's child still comes into our midst, as we say, by word and sacrament. God's Son is hidden within this womb of the church on earth. The flesh of Adam, man, is challenged by this new man, this new Adam of the Word made flesh. Are we receptive to this goodness of the Lord before our eyes? That is the big question for today. There is nothing to do, only to receive His coming to us. Salvation, God gives, that is forgiveness for every sin. Whatever troubles, whatever ailments, whatever questions, there is forgiveness because He comes in a gentle way. To hear the preached word is the message to cast out fear and doubt. The angel says it at the start of his conception to Joseph, fear not. Says it to Mary too, fear not. Jesus says it after the resurrection to the disciples behind locked doors, fear not. Look how our lives have become closer together by God giving faith in His Son. You understand that, right? Small parishes struggle because you get some family connections and that's all good and families can have lines in churches and that's all good. But our connections as we come into this church and drawn together is because of Jesus and the work of God's Spirit. The work of the law can never bring such comfort. Jesus' continued presence of being Emmanuel takes away separation from God and each other because God is in His service to us. Who of us would run away from the Virgin Mary's child? We don't see that today with women who are pregnant, ah! and we run away from them, right? We say, congratulations, and all the other good stuff that comes with that. So why run away from Mary's child? When we see him in a manger scene, we don't run away from that. You got one at the Wabash Courthouse. I have one in front of my church, in front of my house. We don't run away from that. We don't run away from it on Christmas cards or when we hear people singing that in Christmas carols. However, if we are to face the virgin birth of God's Son in all seriousness, let us greet the miracle of grace as Joseph did. Until his return in glory, Christ resides in the church for us. A church that has been around for a long time. A church that in our culture has suffered much shame. A church that is being abandoned for other glories of men to even change the visible church, to empty it finally without even having Christ no longer as the center and his salvation. Treasure how man does not create this promised presence of God in the word and sacrament. We don't do it. We come as pastor and people around these gifts, but we're not making it happen. God is by grace. What he has won for our sin, Jesus now gives. It has miraculously come about by His suffering and death on the cross, and so we know this is good news because He is Savior. And He distributes this freely because He is the Lord, the Lord over the darkness that we just don't know what to do. But Jesus does, 
against all sin, death, and the devil. And so now the duty, like Joseph, is to provide and protect the gospel in the church that has come to us. We dare not abandon her, for she carries the message of peace that the world cannot give. It calls us to confident service to a road less traveled, but we go with the Lord. We go with Emmanuel, and he comes to save us. If Joseph gave his whole life, so we give ours wholly to the promise of who is with us. When grasping these lowly vessels of grace by God, we are no longer left out, even connected to the bold witness of belonging together to a, the saints of all before our time, and a bold witness before our age today. Joseph called him Jesus. Our hope is to call on Jesus, for he draws close to us. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding be with your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. At this time we rise and confess this morning the confession of faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God that is in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, you promised the virgin-born son to reluctant King Ahaz. In the fullness of time, the word became flesh. Open our hearts and strengthen our faith, gladly to receive your son and the signs where he is present, not in signs of our own choosing, but of the holy word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, merciful Savior, preserve your apostolic gospel and its ministers. Cause the name and the resurrection of Christ Jesus to be proclaimed among all nations, including among us who are called to belong to him, that the obedience of faith may be brought about in every place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, preserve for your church and for future generations the institution of marriage of a man and a woman, which you established even before our fall into sin. Grant singleness of heart and mind to the unmarried over worries about the future. Support all husbands and wives in married life. Give protection and, and growth to children. And heal the brokenness felt today that, our, uh, that all our families may reflect the order of your creation. And so with that, we also celebrate the birthdays here at Zion this month of December, remembering Randy, Perry, Judy, Zachary, Emma, Ron, Tanya, Kathy, Joanne, and Tyler. O oh Lord, enrich their life, 
and grant them joy in your service all their days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you not bear with the tiresome flattery and unbelief of kings and rulers forever. Have mercy on us, Lord, and spare our nation. Clear away all empty show of piety and renew genuine faith in the Virgin Son, that his coming at the last may not be a sign against us. Lord, in your mercy, Creator of all, you graciously provide for our worldly welfare through the good and godly labor of others. Bless all those who care for us, particularly all police, firemen, doctors, and other first responders. Even as you care for us through their service, lead them into the way of the peace of Christ, of His great service to us all. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> oh Lord, you care for us all in our needs of body and soul. Give healing to the sick, relief to the suffering, peace to the dying, and comfort to those who mourn. And so we pray then for comfort to Craig, Sue, and Timothy, all those listed in our names for healing, our shut-ins, Pat, Draper, Ruth, Norman, and Alma Smith, for the expectant mother, Mary Kinsey, that you bless her and give her strength for her days of carrying her child, that you be with, O oh Lord, also the family and friends of Kurt Gremmel, that you be able to grant them the peace needed that does pass all understanding, even as you help them to have peace with his departure from this life. According to your gracious will, O Lord, sustain them all by your grace and give them patience and courage as they await the unfolding of your healing grace for life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant that all those preparing to receive the Lord's Supper may rejoice in the presence of your Son's true body and blood, our true Emmanuel, who comes among us to give us a share in your divine life and forgiveness, a true connectedness that cannot be put to shame. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, who is truly Lord and ruler of the house of Israel. Grant that as we recall with thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, we may always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in glory at the last day. For you live and reign ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the offering. Please rise, we continue with the offertory on page 159.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly meet right and salutary that we should in all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again and glory. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gather the name, remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament. In my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. O oh, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father.
The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. We continue with Thank the Lord on page 164. Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love for one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. We continue and conclude with our last hymn, Savior of the Nations, Come. And please note the appointed verses.
please be seated. A few announcements to share with you, particularly the services this week. Uh, please remember we have our extra fourth Wednesday service this week because of the way things lined up. And so that's on Wednesday, 6 o'clock, soup supper, 7 o'clock, the service, 745, the Bible study. Christmas Eve service, remember, is on Saturday, candlelight at 7 o'clock. Christmas Day service is next Sunday. Please know it's at 9 o'clock, not our normal church time, but the normal time we'd have for Christmas Day services, which is 9 o'clock on Christmas Day. Newsletter is due this week for the month of January coming up. Um, please sign the Christmas card that were put out there um, from the missionary board that goes to our shut-ins and others. Um, thanks for those who donated the poinsettias this year. Any other announcements? Okay, so please, if the Secret Sister is there, please remember on the bulletin board to check. There's a card there for you. Anything else? Yep, you have tradition of having uh, some Christmas carols played prior to the service, and so that's at 6.30, service is at 7 o'clock. So please remember that for Christmas Eve. Anything else? Okay. May you be able to walk in this life as Joseph was able to walk with the Lord, and yet he had almost a hands-off approach, though his hands were deeply rooted in service to the Lord, but in a far different way. May we be able to be confident in the same way Joseph was. Um, but as we know, uh, God would do this without a man, because it was one man who would do it all for us, even Joseph. God be with you and strengthen you with the good grace that has come to us in His Son and the promise of your baptism into His name. Amen.